Tina, to be, this is like the best moment of my life to have you on the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, Elise, it's such a pleasure to be here with you and to dive into this conversation we're going to have today. Yeah. Well, and this is, I didn't tell you this in the pre-chat. Usually I'll do my own separate intro where I talk about the guest and how I know them and kind of tee up the episode. But I actually wanted to introduce you while you are here because there has been such a transformation in my life that's happened over the past year of getting to work with you. And I think you know most of it. I don't know if you know all of it. So I just thought it would be fun to to kind of share. And so for everyone who's listening, my guest today is someone who has made a profound impact on my life and the lives of my clients and the people around me in the past year or so that I've been working with her. And so I'll share a little backstory and we'll get into um, some of the conversation. But as a lot of you know, Last January, uh, my husband Jason and I found out that we were pregnant and we've been thinking about starting a family and wanted to start a family for a while. And um, when it happened, we realized there were a lot of things in our lives that needed to change from where we were living to even the way I made money. And at the time, I was working just one-on-one with clients and I started looking at, okay, if I'm going to need to take time off in September, the only way I'm making money right now is by doing one-on-one work, right? It's dollars for hours. I'm like, this is not going to work. So I started thinking, okay, I've got to hire a coach. Like I've got to hire someone who can help me figure out how to scale this, how to create different revenue streams that don't require me to be there. And Gina, you're going to kick me for this. I've been, so I've been following you online for years and you were really like my first introduction to wealth consciousness and financial frequency. And these were all things that I really learned from you. And for some reason at the time, I think, I think you seemed too out of reach. I didn't even think it would be possible to work with you. So I started interviewing these other, um, just these other like success coaches and no one really, no one jived, which I'm so grateful for because one day I was like, why haven't I just reached out to Gina? She's, all, she's been on my vision board for a couple of years. Like, why haven't I just reached out? So I sent you a DM and um, really quickly was able to get enrolled in one of your programs. And the change that happened in my life over the past year from being involved and being enrolled in your programs has been incredible. Um, I mean, we, I doubled my income every quarter. I went for a working, I had to make a list of this. I was like, what? I'm going to forget all the changes if I don't have a list. I doubled my income every quarter. I went from working on my own to having a team of five. I created a new program that I'm now selling. I traveled to places like Vancouver and Venice, Italy. I started flying first class, which I was like, never in a million years would someone like me fly first class. I didn't think it was possible. Um, I got my dream car. I started prioritizing self-care. I got monthly massages. I think one of the biggest things is I overcame just some major limiting beliefs about myself and what I thought was possible um, for me in my life. And just even my connection with source is so much stronger than it was when we first started working together. And um, to kind of go back to the beginning of the story, a lot of you listening know that we did lose the the pregnancy pretty early on. Um, And that was a really, that was probably one of the biggest challenges in my life, but kind of the the cherry on top to come full circle is this past Thanksgiving, we did find out again that we were pregnant. And so we're now expecting this summer. And my life is so different from where it was when I first just connected with you. And so much of it is, I just want to say thank you because you've set such an example of what's possible when we as women entrepreneurs step up and believe in ourselves and really connect with source and femininity and just show up more visibly in the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the impact you've had on my life. Elise, Elise, it is so glorious to hear. Um, It's been such an honor to be on the journey and to witness and see all your transformation. And, you know, I can, I can share I've learned and what I've been taught and not everyone seizes it the way you have and for and yet we see that anybody who makes the decision to think bigger to take action to get out of the excuse to get out of the limitation like literally it is all possible and you are such a living role model and testament to that. Mm, Thank you. Well, and I I love the conversation too about making the decision because I think that's one of the biggest things that was one of like the first lightning bolt moments for me when I started working with you is 
just this idea of once you make that decision and leave no other options, everything starts to change and transform in your life. And I know you've made a lot of really pivotal decisions in your life that have gotten you to where you are today. And I think a lot of my audience probably knows about you, at least I hope they do, because I feel like I've talked about you enough on my social, but in case they don't, tell us a little bit about how you became the Gina DeV that we all know and see and love so much today. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I am an ordinary woman who had extraordinary dreams, like I think every person does inside of themselves. Um, I'm a school teacher's kid from Detroit. I was taught go to college, get a job, which I did, except my job was to become a psychotherapist. And I didn't realize that when I got my master's degree in clinical psychology and became a therapist, that I became an entrepreneur. Um, I just thought that the clients would come. And I didn't know anything about money and wealth consciousness and getting clients and charging and setting prices. Like I just wanted to help people live a better life. And that process was very scary for me. I had racked up a lot of student loans, debt, credit card debts. Um, and I was about $75,000 in debt, you know, living off of about $24,000 a year at the time. And it was anything but living the extraordinary life. It was like I had these like big ideas inside my head of what I wanted to do one day, and yet that seemed so far away from where I was at that time. And truly, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, and I be started to become unavailable for the struggle, and I became unavailable for staying stuck. And even though I didn't know what else to do, the concept of what I'd been taught, well, if you work harder, you'll make more money. It clearly wasn't the case. It couldn't have been working harder than I was or putting in more hours a week than I was. Um, and I was still living off my $24,000 a year. So I made a number of decisions. One was to move to California. It seemed like everybody was like in the land of the sunshine was like happy and making money there. Um, and the second decision was to become a life coach or a success coach. Um, so I left the field of psychology, which I have great reverence for and respect for, of course. Um, but I really realized that the business model let me use my skills set, um, but without the lack and the limitation of insurance companies and pricing challenges and all of that. And then I, you know, I think the biggest thing is I just kept going. I kept dreaming. And even though I didn't know how to get to my dreams, I kept, I didn't self-abandon. And, you know, at the time that I started, it was making $2,000 a month. I didn't know how to make $5,000 a month, but I kept going and I kept taking risks. Also, I kept investing in myself. I remember I was down to my last $3,000 on a credit card and Someone, somehow I had heard about, a, uh, it was like a Tony Robbins coaching package that was 3000 It wasn't with him, obviously. It was with one of his coaches. It was for $3,000. And this was a real risk for me because I realized I knew enough about my pattern with money that if I didn't buy that coaching package, that money was going to go. I was going to spend it on gas, groceries, whatever. And then I would still be the same person and I would really be stuck. Or I could take the risk and invest in me and learn um, how to maximize my potential and learn how to make money. And I did exactly that. And once I invested in that package, I was able to actually start charging in that increment. I gave myself permission to, rather than my like single sessions and the trading dollars for hours that I started charging in packages. And I started doing the things that were uncomfortable for me at the time, which was learning about business and internet marketing and branding and copywriting and all the stuff I didn't want to do or didn't think that I was good at because um, I just wanted to coach people. I just wanted to help them with their lives. And I think it was continuing to dream big, see that if other, someone else had done it that was possible for me and be willing to take the action has gotten me to... Um, the company and the lifestyle and the impact that I have today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that really stands out to me, and it's, it's so funny because I think what you teach about money and financial frequency and just even what you model with your own life, because I know you're big on everyone has to make the right choice for them and choose their own beliefs around money. But I, I didn't resonate with 
anybody until I started hearing the way you talked about money and wealth consciousness and investing in yourself and actually prioritizing things like self-care and being okay with buying the latte and getting the massage and <laughs> manifesting a lot of money in your business as well. And it, it's so counter to everything I was taught growing up about saving every penny. And, you know, we grew up upper middle class, but we were still clipping coupons. And my mom taught us how to compare the price per ounce when we'd go grocery shopping to see what was the cheaper option. And so I remember when I first started encountering your work, it was like, Ooh, can you really live like, like, is this okay? Can I, can I really give myself permission to invest in myself and spend on myself this way? And the funny thing is ever since I have, just because I think I'm living more aligned with my values now, I've made way more money and it's been way more joyful as well. So there's a, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, right. It's like, yeah. um, I was working, you know, everyone was saying like, you need to learn to with, live within your means. You need to learn within. And I was like, okay. Cause I was such the little miss perfect and such the good girl and so compliant. And I like, you know, didn't go out and meet my friends for dinner or drinks and go shopping. And I was like living on $24,000 a year. Like, like, what are you going to do? Pay, you pay minimums on credit cards. And I got a mastermind partner and I bought a Susie Orman book. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm going to do this. And then finally I woke up and I was like, I don't want to learn how to live on $24,000 a year. I just mm. like, like, like this whole, like live within your means thing. Yes. But I, not on $24,000 a year. I don't want to learn how to do that. I want to learn how to make more money and create different ratios. Amen. I mean, why? It's like, why? <laughs> why try so hard? It's so, that is so true. And, you know, we've used this term wealth consciousness a couple of times. And I think some of the listeners are going to get it and others are like, what the heck, like psycho babble are you guys talking about? So can you share, because you're the one who really introduced me to this, this, um, just this concept. Can you share what wealth consciousness even is in your own definition? Sure, sure. Um, I would call it the psychology of wealth. And I think that, you know, when you think about having a consciousness to anything, whether it's conscious parenting or consciousness around the planet, um, you know, consciousness of, of what's going on with, with current events, it's, it's an awareness and it's, it's a higher way of thinking about it. It's not just the status quo if you have a higher consciousness. And the, you know, what most of us have been taught about money you have to save, it's hard to come by, don't spend it, you have to be careful with it. Um, it's for other people, like there's all these um, money rules that Western society tends to have that has imposed on people about what is right and wrong as if it is a code of ethics. And what I uncovered, on uh, as I grew my own wealth consciousness is I gave myself permission to choose what rules were right for me. Mm -hmm. And as we go along and we look at life, there's so many ways to do life. Whereas before that, you know, it was like, you had to get married or you had to go to college and get a job. And it's like, well, says who and why? And so as I just started to open up that there are a lot of ways to do life, there's a lot of ways to do business. There's a lot of ways to do relationship. Um, there's a lot of ways to do money as well. And I started really taking a look at all these things, like at anything from like renting versus buying. Like I was taught, like renting is throwing your money away. You have to buy. And it's like, I live in Southern California. You're like, you know, is that actually the best use of my money is to buy a house that, especially at the time when I was just starting my career that I didn't even want to live in, um, that would be like small in an area that I didn't, you know, was there'd be no reason to be in California. Um, you know, it's like all this stuff that you can't do, well, according to who or what. And so wealth consciousness is really getting that there is no lack of money in the world. There, there is a disruption in distribution there's a disruption in knowledge around it, but there is no lack of money in the world. For those of you that are entrepreneurs, there's no lack of clients in the world. Um, and there's actually no lack of abundance. The, the distribution factors, the abuse of power, the abuse of wealth, those, those things are there, but that has nothing to do with money. And it's not money's fault. That's what people have done with it as they um, need to do what they need to do with it. But for the purposes of our conversation, uh, understanding that 
what you desire has a certain financial frequency to it typically. And when you start to give yourself permission to explore how can you step into that particular frequency, you start asking better questions. You know, before my, pro my wealth consciousness or more like lack consciousness or even poverty consciousness was all about how can I save money? And if I needed more money, I remember, God bless him, my father uh, was an elementary school teacher. And when money got tight, we needed to save money. They, it was about cutting things out. So I remember, like, remember a call waiting, like it was like $2 a month. Like, I remember I was in high school and he canceled the call waiting to save the $2 a month. You know, and that's, you know, God bless, like his father worked in, in Detroit in the automotive factories. Like, so, you know, but for us as entrepreneurs, I think if, if more money needs to come in, it's not necessarily how can we save if there's something that I don't want to cut out, but it's like, how can we make more money, you know, that creates even more impact? Um, you know, there is a time to scale down and scale back if you're overspending in some way, but uh, it's really an opportunity for us all to take a look at what actually are our money rules and values and to live by those. Oh my gosh, yes. And in your book, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, let me see, I've got my copy over here, Audacity uh -huh. Queen. You talk about all the different archetypes that can tend to control the show and run the show behind the scenes with our money, and we don't even realize it. And that was such just a big breakthrough for me, getting acquainted with my archetypes and the who were really just trying to protect me, right? But it's I wasn't aware of them and they were holding me back and I'm still working through it, right? It's like you uncover one archetype, you work through it, then you realize there's another one kind of running this show. So the book has been so, so helpful for that. And I'm curious to get your perspective on this too, because I think if we were recording this interview, you know, four weeks ago, it would be a very different conversation. And so at the time of this recording, it's early April of 2020, and we're really at the kind of the beginning of this global pandemic of COVID-19 and a recession. And so, you know, as we talk about wealth consciousness right now, I think some people might be listening and saying, well, it's the exact opposite of everything I'm hearing on the news. It's the exact opposite of everything I'm being told to do right now, which is cut back, save, you know, lean out my team where I can. What's your take on maintaining or up-leveling our wealth consciousness, even in a time of financial constriction on a global level? Sure. Um, I don't know that there is financial constriction on a global level. Mm. What I do know is that God is bigger than COVID-19 or spirit or source or universe. Um, and that always through evolution, certain industries do crumble because they're outdated or they need a wake up call or they need to be rejuvenated and revived in a different way. Others need to end and then other new ones are always popping up. So in every economic crisis or downfall, there have always been people, entrepreneurs and industri industries and corporations that were either formed and started to soar um, you know, like companies like Uber started in the 2008, 2009, like housing crisis. Well, that housing crisis happened because the universe is always self-organizing and self-correcting. There was light that needed to be brought to some dark places within that particular industry. And um, same with right now, that it, it's no different. Um, and there are definitely industries that are being a hard hit, but it does not mean that individuals do not have opportunity. And especially if you are looking um, you know, at this uh, or listening to this podcast or watching this video, there's opportunity for you. And if you're in an industry where you got, you're laid off from a job or um, the company has shut down or for whatever, I don't believe in coincidences and there's something that you're being invited to and it is not your lack in destruction or fear or worry that there's something else in some other way where you're being guided. If you are in an industry that is not being affected, then don't borrow other people's worry and fear right now. You know, for those of us that are, have the ability to conduct business online. I've, I've never been busier, quite frankly, you know, my business isn't going anywhere. I'm pivoting for sure. And I'm definitely making changes. Um, like I said, I just came out with a book 
And I don't know that I consciously chose to uh, wait 20 years to publish my first book and have it come out during a global pandemic. <laughs> um, I was able to do a New York and Miami book tour stop and had a lot of other cities uh, planned that, you know, certainly that got canceled. And my in-person events have, have been postponed. I shouldn't say canceled. They're postponed right now. Um, but I'm pivoting, me and my entire team, and we're doing a virtual book tour. And I am have the opportunity to be on podcasts like this one. And we're doing all kinds of online programs. And um, like I said, I've, we've never been busier. And we're definitely, not just for personal gain, seizing the moment, but also for impact. You know, we, we believe that when people the right people purchase our products and programs that their lives or careers or financial circumstances are enhancing. And so we are not being shy about that. We are uh, shouting from the mountaintops what's available. We're offering things for free, but we are also actively selling. And I think that most of your audience is very much in that position. Um, they might be targeting different individuals or different companies or even different industries. It's certainly what I'm guiding a lot of my clients to do right now. Um, so the, the world is pivoting, but there are so many of us that still have access to the global marketplace, literally from the comfort of our own home right now. Um, so I invite you to really take a look at what opportunity is there for you. Yes. Yes. And I love what you said about not borrowing other people's fear because it's so easy. And even this morning, as I was getting ready, I was listening to a podcast from a, you know, one of the top female entrepreneurs in the world, arguably. And she was just talking about all the changes they're making in their business model right now to lay people off and cut down on spending. And I found myself wondering, gosh, do I need to be more worried about this than I have been? Like, do I need to be looking, leaning down when there's nothing financially right now that tells me I need to in terms of my sales and kind of like you, right? It's like, I'm planning on growing and expanding during this, but it's so easy to get caught up in that. So I think one of the big things I took from what you just said is just thinking for yourself and being aware, but also really critically thinking and making your own decisions about there's the economy and there's my economy, right? And mm -hmm. what am I going to choose what am I going to choose to pay attention to, right? And what do I really have control over, which at the end of the day is our own economy. And you spoke to something that I really wanted to ask you about in this interview is just how you've made the pivot. Because like you said, you probably did not consciously choose to launch your first book <laughs> in the middle of this global pandemic, but clearly there's a reason for it. And I've seen you so quickly make the pivot. And surely, I, I can only imagine there were many days of disappointment, right? It's like, you've got this whole book tour lined up. You've got everything set. You're so ready. And, and I can't imagine. So I, first I'd love to hear just how you manage your mindset in the pivot. And then we can get into a little bit more tactical. Sure. Uh, there weren't many days of sadness. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, it's really interesting, you know, having written the book, The Audacity to Be Queen, The Unapologetic Art of Dreaming Big and Manifesting Your Most Fabulous Life. It doesn't say manifesting your most fabulous life when the rest of the economy is going great, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, or when there's not a global pandemic. Like there's, it, that's just not how it works. Um, so, so like spoiler alert, the, like the crux of the book is it's all happening for you, not to you. <laughs> and, you know, when we develop our neurological pathways that like, and you have that so strong in you, it's happening for you, not to you. It's happening, like, I, I couldn't not, not take my own medicine. And I and literally, it was like the wave of emotion. Like when I realized after, um, my, this, the second stop in Miami that was coming home and that everything else was going to be canceled for the foreseeable future. I felt this like almost physical, like the sadness was trying to get to me. And but, but my energetic field was so strong. I was like, Jenny, you have a choice here. You can, you can let this sadness take root or, you know, it's not doing a spiritual bypass, but when you have a spiritual connection or, or a strong psychology, you do get to take the shortcuts and you don't have to go down a detour. And I was like, all right. And one of the practices in the book is I'm thrilled this is happening because so I did have to sit myself down and get my journal out 
And I said, okay, I'm thrilled my book tour is canceled because. And I got like, well, it's not canceled. It doesn't, the in-person is canceled, not virtual. Mm -hmm. So I started um, making a list of all the podcasts that I could reach out to, to, to be on. And it's like, you know, I started realizing, like, I love being in person. I'm like an extra, extra extrovert. I love people. But the truth is, you know, being on enough of fabulous podcasts like yours and other people's, like, it's going to have a way farther, you know, reach than any in-person book signing I'm going to do right now. So I'm like, okay, I'm thrilled this happening because, like, I'm actually doing a number of podcast interviews. I'm thrilled this happening because you know, when the um, studios started shutting down, I was going to have to go fly around the country to go and get media exposure, which is time consuming and it's expensive. And it's, you know, sometimes even going to cities that don't necessarily inspire me, but if I wanted the media exposure, so I get to sit here now and I'm getting booked for all this media and I don't have to fly around the country anymore. Like it literally has come to me. Um, there are Things that I'm doing, um, I'm throwing this happening because I was like, okay, so what can I do? I do daily Instagram lives right now that I wasn't doing. And it has so re-engaged my community. Um, there was a program that we were going to sell and it was actually my husband's idea. Why don't we just give it away? Mm. And the community has gone ballistic over it and they're so grateful. And that's been a huge re-engagement. So that feels like really great. Um, and then there's something else that I've wanted to do. I've really been obsessed with starting a membership site. And I kept saying, well, I'm gonna do that after my book tour, after my travels, or after, after, after. And, you know, I've really, um, I, I, I dive in deep. I'm working um, with some experts and some mastermind partners and really studying. So that's gonna be coming out sooner than I had anticipated. So then when I, when I can travel again, all these different, online funnels and membership sites and different, you know, pieces um, that was going to be later is happening sooner. So those are some of the ways that we've been pivoting. Um, it's all stuff that needed to happen, all stuff that I wanted to happen. So it's just been a different order in which I thought it was going to happen. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, I think what you said is so important. There's two things I want to really pull out of what you just said. The first is that exercise of I'm thrilled this is happening because, and I remember the first time I heard it from you, I was like, this seems like a really tough exercise to do in the middle of a, a crap storm, we'll say, what feels like a crap storm, but learning to really look at and having the discipline to do it and to sit there and write it out. I've done that numerous times over the course of the past year when things feel like they're just going, you know, not at all the direction I thought they would be. And you always find something. So I would really encourage everyone listening to use that and implement it because it's so simple, but it's so powerful. And the second thing that you said that I think is so, people are going to want to know how you did this. You said you felt the, the sadness of the book tour being, the physical book tour being canceled kind of creep in, but not, you had such a strong force field up that it wasn't able to overtake you. Clearly that takes conditioning, that takes putting in the reps and the practice on a regular basis to have that strong of a mental force field built up. Tell us about what are you doing on a daily basis in terms of routine for mindset, spiritual connection to get yourself to that point where something happens and it doesn't phase you. Sure. Well, the, the mind, the brain, and the neurological pathways, they're very similar to building muscles. And, you know, if you are actively being physical and working out, and then you have to go run a sprint or a race, you're prepared. You're not going to be winded. You're not going to rip a muscle. You're not going to twist an ankle. You're not going to um, go slow when you need to go fast. And I think that for those of us that are so committed to our personal growth and our personal development and our mindset, like that's why we do it. You know, um, I, I don't believe in being a personal development junkie because that's just junkie. Like that's just the people that read all the books and their life does not show or they take all the programs and all the courses and they're still a hot mess. Like, you know, that's just being a junkie. But if you're really going for growth and if you're really going for personal development, it should show. It's like, you know, the people that are at the gym and like there, there's no physical transformation going on. It's like, you know, it's, 
because of whatever their food choices are, you know, not doing the right exercises for their body, et cetera. So I think that it was one of the times where I was able to, you know, I was very grateful that it was just one of the, um, the, the fruits of the labor. You know, I think it was one of those things where before it would, I would have been so triggered before. And then, you know, the archetypes that we talk in here, like before I would have been um, stuck in victim or stuck in um, paranoid gangster, or any of the lower vibrational archetypes of like, this isn't fair, this is, or, or the defeatist and all the comparison. But, you know, I watched so-and-so's book tour and she got to do that, you know, just like really victim or princessy energy around it. And, you know, when you're committed to ladies, queen, and for those of you men, king, um, when you're committed to the going for the highest form of yourself, and you do the work, like it, it slows the trigger down. See, triggers just happen like that. And we, and we can't deal with anything. It's like a car going off the cliff. And the only thing you can do is like, wait till it gets crashes to the bottom, dusts off. And then you're like, work your way up to the mountain again. But when you do the personal development work, it slows all that down. And so it's like, it starts to come slower. And when it comes slower and you're more aware of it, you can see it and you can catch it and you can deflect it back. Hmm. So it's, it, it makes life um, so much more manageable. You know, so many things in, in my life, whether it was in my relationship or with my team or with clients, like stuff that I just used to react to because it was a trigger for me. It was unconscious. I couldn't see it. It felt bigger than me. Um, now with the different con mental conditioning and different mindset, now I can be more curious. Now I can say, okay, well, what really happened? Now I can say, show me that email. Is that really what was said? Where before I would just freak out because someone said something and it made me upset or angry. Um, and so that's the way that I now am able to approach life is, you know, God's spirit universe. It's like nothing is happening to our detriment. And that's tough to take a look at when we see traumatic situations happen. And I'm not saying you should always have to have an experience of bliss or joy. Um, I will, I will transparently share, even though like I saw the sadness come and I was like, nope, I'm thrilled this is happening because it's hard to be devastated when you see all of the, the benefit, right? Mm -hmm. If you can really collect the jewels of the benefit, oh, I get to do this, this, and this. Once I did collect that, as a queen, queens do allow their humanness. And then there was a moment where I did let myself mourn the, the first couple of months that the book came out that I wasn't able to be in person with people and hug them and sign books. And I did cry and I did feel sad, but it wasn't more than like 15 minutes. Like, so I, I definitely, I want you to say, think that I don't have human emotions. I do, but they didn't overtake me and they didn't become a detour. And, um, and I didn't go into some sort of sabotage as a result, like, oh, well, I can't do that. So I'm not going to do anything. Um, it's, it's just a, a gentler and a po more powerful approach to life. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love everything you just said. And even just putting the practices into place, I've noticed in my own life, and it, it doesn't have to take that long to learn how to better navigate the triggers. Because mm -hmm. even with the past year, I've noticed I'm so much less, I'm just less shakable, just with yes. every learning to, to put these practices into place and doing the, I'm thrilled this is happening because and reminding yourself that everything is happening for you. And it's not, it's not always my instant instinct yet. And hopefully maybe someday it will be, but I love the concept of both embracing your humanity and allowing yourself to feel things. Cause that's the only way we process, right. Is letting ourselves feel it, but then also just continuing to hone our our mental toughness and sharpness to, to be able to pivot, right? Because that's one of the things that you talk about a lot in the book is queens are solution oriented. And I'd say for our gentlemen, kings are solution oriented as well. So with that being said, so I want to talk a little bit about the book before we wrap up, because this is, I think I read it in like two days. I was just like, boom, 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 highlighting. It was so good. If I didn't have to work, I would have read it in one day, <laughs> but it was absolutely phenomenal. And it was so cool to see a lot of what you teach on our coaching calls and in our curriculum 
all distilled down into this one beautiful book. Tell us about what inspired you to write the book and, and tell us more about what's in the book and who should be reading it. Sure, sure. Um, well, I really will say it's a culmination of my life partially, um, but certainly 20 years of personal development, spiritual development, entrepreneurialism, career building, wealth consciousness. Um, it turned out, anyone who's written a book probably knows this, um, and anyone who has a child has probably experienced this. It came out completely differently than how I intended. Like, completely. I'd written a proposal, it came out different than the proposal. Um, and I think that this message just took on a life of its own. So for those who haven't read it, it's, it's a bit playful. It's definitely deep. Um, it's part memoir. It's part personal development. It's part, uh, big thinking for the entrepreneurs there too. And I really wrote it because, um, I wanted to express what, what I kind of, put in the umbrella of queenhood, but I wanted to express, particularly for women, what it looks like for us to give ourselves permission to live our best lives. And that so many women are, like the age of queen is now. And for us to live our best lives, we have got to shatter the old rules. We've got to get out of being afraid of what other people are going to say about us or think about us. Um, we've got to eradicate the idea that it's possible to not be criticized and to not have it hold us back from our own expression and our own dreams and our own um, way of doing life. And so I used very much my life and my stories and many of my clients as well, just to really show like the, the range and the depth of how women are getting out of excuses and getting out of compliance and getting out of dysfunction and getting out of the shadows and really taking their rightful place at center stage in every area of their life unapologetically. So um, that's what I was passionate about to write. And then, um, you know, I th really believe that we learn through stories. So I share so many of my own stories and so many of my clients' stories. Um, then the the work that I've done, you know, everything has a reason. There's a reason I have a master's degree in clinical psychology and was a therapist at the beginning because um, I learned so much about shadow work and archetypes from that era and then brought it in in kind of a fun and lighthearted way with to help you have a clearer picture of who or what is running the show when you're out of your like real self. Yes, yes, yes. And there, there are so many fun stories, so many like heart-wrenching stories and compelling stories and fun stories about your own financial quantum leaps and then your clients and even the story of how you and Glenn met. I didn't know that until I read the book. I loved reading that. I thought that was so cool. Um, but just, you know, from someone who has worked with you and now read the book, I would say for any woman who is seeking something greater in her life and knows that there's something inside of her that has either been dimmed or been diminished or that she's apologizing for that's actually this beautiful part of who she is. It's like, you have to read this book. If it, it, it gives you permission to, to, I would say, show up and step up as your full self. And I tell you what, like I said in the beginning, the difference just taking these teachings in that's made in my life has been profound. And I want the same for every single one of my girlfriends, of the women in my life. And I just, I can't recommend enough that people read it um, and that they get it. So tell us, and I, I'll ask you one final question, but before you tell us about where people can find the book, where they can connect with you, because I know people are going to want to get engaged and involved. Great, great. Thank you, Elise. Um, you can get the book at divineliving.com forward slash book. It's D-I-V-I-N-E, divineliving.com forward slash book. If you would like a free gift, you can go to divineliving.com forward slash epic gift. And there I have for you, if you opt in, you'll get the introduction and first chapter, both in audio and uh, PDF format. There's a couple of meditations and a video training as well. Um, and, and if you want to follow me, there's other things on my website as well. There's videos and podcasts and talk show and magazine, um, lots of free resources there. And you can follow me on Instagram at Gina DeBee. Oh my gosh. So many goodies guys get involved, get engaged, get the book, 
watch the talk show on there. I think that was actually, I watched the talk show and I was like, I'm in, I'm hooked. I got to I got to work with this woman. So just know you are opening up an exciting new pathway in your life by getting involved in this content. So, um, this is, it's just been so fun to get to have this conversation with you. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, um, with all of my listeners. And before we wrap, I just want to ask you this because the instant impact show is all about how we can get better results in our life in less time. And it's all about making that quantum leap in life, in business. And I know you are the queen of the quantum leap. So I would love to hear from you just any final words of advice or guidance for anyone who's ready to really make that instant impact and make that big leap in their life. Yes. Create some spark today. And what I mean by that is we've gotten so complacent about thinking that we can't or something needs to take a long time. And that's a very boring concept to the human spirit within us that is actually very outrageous. So uh, you, I, there's a chapter in the book about bending time and space. And whatever it is that you desire, if it's a certain amount of money or a new client or desiring to move or whatever it is that really would light you up, make the decision to create that spark today, take action today, and watch how the universe will meet you there to bend time and space that it doesn't need to be as far away as your neurological pathways may tell you, that you can override that and decide what you want and you can have it now. Mm, oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Gina. I got chills while you were talking about that. I love it. Um, guys, for everyone listening, connect with Gina, buy the book, The Audacity to Be Queen. I promise you it's going to be something you're going to want to read and reread again. And um, I just, again, Gina, I can't thank you enough for your time. So oh, tremendous thanks to you. It's been such a pleasure to be here. You are such a shining star yourself. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right, guys. Hope you loved this episode. Go connect with Gina, go get the book, and I will see you next week for our next episode. Bye for now.